Let me show you how I turned this HDR file into this final image using just a bit of Photoshop. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description. And now let's begin. So this was a pretty intense, colorful sunset. We do have some pretty harsh light. That's why we are working with an HDR to get all the details out of the highlights and the shadows at the same time without losing image quality. Now the first thing I want to do is to change the profile to Adobe Landscape. And you can see this will already change the exposure of the image very, very slightly, making the darker parts a little brighter. And we will also get some more saturation. Next up, let's work on the exposure of the image. Therefore, we want to go into the lights panel and right away I want to bring up the exposure quite a lot so we get way more details out of those shadows. I think right about here is a pretty good spot. Of course, increasing the exposure will also blow out the sky, but don't worry about that. That's why we are shooting HDR. With that in mind, we can bring down the highlights and thus we prevent the overexposure going on in the sky. Perfect. At this point, the shadows are still a little bit too dark and I do want to have some nice visible detail in those areas. So obviously we can just bring up the shadows, which will help quite a bit. I also want to bring up the blacks. Not only will this introduce more details in the darker parts, but this will also help kind of emulate a softer look, which I think looks quite good for this image. And you can see by just adjusting the light situation, we already kind of saved the exposure here. Now let's work on the white balance for a moment. At this point, the image does have a very, very strong yellow color cast, which I don't like. So to prevent that, I'm going to bring down the temperature in order to reduce that yellow color cast. Right about here is a good spot. I don't think I need to touch the tint. However, I want to bring up the vibrance just a bit. All right. Colors do look way more balanced this way. Next up, we can go into the effects tab to introduce some texture. And then I'm going to drop the clarity quite dramatically, which will introduce a very soft look. And for those kind of scenes with this harsh light in the background, it really works nice to create this soft look overall. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for the same effect, making everything a lot softer. Just keep in mind, bringing down the dehaze will make the rest of the image brighter as well. But looking at this program, we are pretty safe so far. Now after the effects, I do like to apply a little bit of masking. Actually for this shot, there's quite a bit of masking involved. So let's get started. Uh, why don't we start with something easy? Let's use a linear gradient. And using that, let's cover most of the foreground like this. What I want to do here is to create some vignetting effect, which just means the foreground needs to be a little darker in order to bring more attention to the center part of the image. So what I'm doing here is to bring down the exposure just around here. I don't want to underexpose anything too badly. And at the same time, in this area right next in the foreground, I want to bring up the clarity, which adds some very cool detail to the image. Perfect. All right, that's it for the foreground for now. Let's also work on the sky. Again, I'm just using a linear gradient covering most of the sky like this. Make it nice and soft. And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure. However, just a little bit. I don't want to make those orange clouds too dark. I am also going to bring up the contrast. This will make the clouds pop a bit more. I think that looks great. I do want to use another linear gradient right away for the top left corner like this. And in here, let's see. I think I'm going to bring up the contrast. Okay, and I might even add a third linear gradient right on top of it. And with this one, I'm going to bring down the shadows, which will make the blues of the sky darker. And I'm also going to drop the blacks here. Just giving more punch to the clouds by doing it this way. All right, at this point, we can notice the whole image getting a little bit too dark. So we want to fix that. I'm going to use a radial gradient covering most of the center like this. And what I want to do in here is to bring up the shadows first. Since we shot this as an HDR, 
Increasing the shadows in an area like this will tremendously help us. I also want to bring up the whites. This adds some really nice contrast, especially with the lights in the background. Okay, and then let's also raise the blacks. This helps to create the soft look. And I do think we can introduce more temperature in this area, making just this area a little warmer without losing the coldness of the top part of the sky. Okay, let's see. I also want to bring down the clarity here, making this area even softer. And let's also bring down the dehaze. Now we're starting to get some light bleed effect right there on the edges, which is an awesome effect. I think I want to enhance that effect some more. So let's use a radial gradient and place it just around here on the very bright part. I'm going to bring up the blacks, making it glow even more. I am also going to bring up the saturation since increasing the blacks will kind of lower the saturation in this area. That is not what we want. So let's just bring it up a notch like this. And again, I'm going to use negative dehaze to make that glow effect stronger. Wonderful. Now I think we're almost done. There's just one more thing I want to do and that is to do some dodging on that bright green grass right there in the center. So how can we target that area? I'm going to create a new color range mask and let's just click right in here. At first, this is selecting way too much. So we are going to use the refine slider, bring it down and you can see how we're getting a pretty good selection this way. I think right about here looks good. Now I do want to further tweak this mask by subtracting a linear gradient, making sure only that area right there in the center is selected. Let's subtract another linear gradient from the foreground going up. Perfect. And in here, all I want to do to do the dodging is bring up the exposure. And thus we're creating some kind of light effect right there in the background, which looks great. That's it for the masking. We can take a look at the image before and after the masking. So here we have the one without the masks and here with the masking applied. Quite a difference. So at this point, let's do some more color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer. And the first thing we are noticing about this image is that the green tones are looking quite toxic, to be honest. I do want to change that. So let's just bring down the green saturation. I'm also going to bring down the yellow saturation to kind of get a more natural looking green right there. However, I want the sky to be vibrant. So I'm going to bring up the orange tones just like this and i think i'm also going to bring up the blues a little bit and the purples as well and those two will just affect this area right here in the top part okay i think that we are good for now in the color mixer let's also apply some split toning and make this really colorful i'm going to start with the highlights and of course since we're working with the sunset image we want to make the highlights warmer so let's set up the hue first. Something around here looks quite nice and I'm going to bring up the saturation quite a bit, introducing some very heavy golden tones to this image. Wonderful. We can also work on the midtones. I'm not sure if I want to introduce warm tones to the midtones as well. I think I want to go with the colder hue first. Let's give it a try. And this will help to keep the color balance a little bit. So with the hue setup, let's bring up the saturation a notch. That's too much. I think right about here looks fine. Okay, I'm quite happy with how things are looking. Just one more thing I want to do in the calibration tab. Yeah, I want to bring down the blue primary hue. This just makes the sky look a little more intense. And let's see, I think we can further bring up the saturation in here, just like this, all right. And at this point, we can sharpen the image in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key so you can see where the masking is applied. And we're going to bring up the amount of sharpening, just like this. Perfect, and that is the image after the raw adjustments. So we went from this original file to this. 
This also means all we have done right here can be done in Lightroom as well if you want. However, we are now going to use a bit of Photoshop to finalize this image. So let's open up this object. Okay, so first I want to clean up this image and that's going to be tricky. Let me duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl J. What I really, really don't like is this area right here where a secondary is leaning into the image. Now, this would be super hard to get rid of manually, but hopefully the generative fill of Photoshop will make quick work of that. So I'm going to just make a very rough selection around this tree. I have to get rid of parts of the main tree as well, as you can see, but we need to really clean up this area. Okay, that's a rough selection. What I want to do next is to hit Generative Fill and hit Generate. And let's see what Photoshop does. Uh, okay, that was perfect. Don't think we need to change anything anymore in this area. I'm still blown away by the power of the Generative Fill, I have to say. This was really, really quick and easy. So with that out of the way, we can safely merge all those layers to keep the layer palette clean. I'm selecting everything and hit Ctrl E. Then let's add some more heavy glow. I'm going to create a new layer and let's switch the player's landing mode to hard light. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B and we want to set the brush opacity to 10% in order to keep this effect subtle. Also set the brush hardness to 0%. And then I am going to pick a color from right there in the area where I want to add the glow effect. I'm holding down the Alt key and just click in there and we will get this color tone. With the brush is now set up, I'm going to carefully brush in once or twice on a few areas to create this very cool looking glow effect. Right there where it is the brightest, I'm going to paint in a few more times to make it heavier. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. I don't want to overdo it, so let's stop at this point. I also think we can make this image a little warmer, so let's use a photo filter adjustment layer and bring up the density here slightly. Okay, I don't want this photo filter effect over the whole image, so I'm going to invert the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I. Then I'm again just using the brush with the foreground color set to white and I'm going to paint in this photo filter effect over very specific areas right there in the center and just make those areas warmer instead of all of the image. Perfect. At this point, let's merge everything into a new layer hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E and I'm going to duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl J. With this one, we want to add some Orton Glow. I'm going to do this going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and with the radius around 55 pixels, I'm hitting OK. And right away, go to Edit, Fade Gaussian Blur, set the blending mode to Lighten, and bring down the opacity. Now that's a real good looking Orton Glow effect right there. Let's go with around 20% opacity, hit OK, and that's it. So I think I want to mask out this Autumn Glow effect from the bottom part. I'm going to create a layer mask for this, and I'm going to use the gradient tool with the colors going from black to transparent to mask out the foreground with a very nice gradient. All right, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. At this point, we might desaturate some colors a little more, so let's use a Vibrance Adjustment layer, bring down the Vibrance a bit. And again, I'm going to invert that layer mask since I only want to really desaturate the foreground. So I'm going to use a white brush again and start painting over the foreground here. Actually, I don't think the very near foreground needs to be desaturated, but just the center part. All right, and here we have the finished image. So this was quite some heavy editing. I, however, think this looks really, really good on this image. If you have any questions or comments about the editing here, feel free to write a comment on this video. And thank you so much for watching.